One of my favorite places. I heard Dan Muller preach on it one time, and it just sealed the deal in my heart about our identity. It says, uh, so 2 Corinthians 2.14, But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, an aroma from death to death. To the other, an aroma from life to life. And who is adequate for these things? For we are not like many, peddling the word of God, but as from sincerity, but as from God, we speak, listen to this, Richard, we speak in Christ in the sight of God. All right. Richard's the guy that had the, the vision the other night of that structure that was created by the embrace of the Father and Son. And I was thinking about it when we were going to talk about this tonight. We speak in Christ. How many of you have spent your Christian life trying to say and do the right things for Christ? In, in the time that, that I have, some of it, the time we spend doing that is a waste of time. Because we have the opportunity to speak in Him. That's incredible. So I know you've got some, some, a couple of stories Tell us about them and um, that idea of being a fragrance wherever you go to God. It's so different than we normally think because we would think going to a place like Burning Man that you've got to carry everything of God that there is into that place. But I know what you found is that he beats us to those places with his own presence in spite of the nature of the event or whatever. So... Just uh, tell us two of your favorite stories, and then I'll ask you a couple questions. Well, um, that's exactly how. When I, my first year was just two years ago, I went out there, um, and I, because I was a part of a group, I just said, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to be here to learn. And so I just stepped back, and God blew me away with this, with this showing me his love for people beyond my imagination and how he would break into people's lives. It just floored me and changed me forever. And uh, so it, it was, that's why I go back because uh, it just, uh, it's kind of addicting to see what God will do when you just empty yourself and allow him to speak through you and, uh, and see the fruit. A lot of the first thing I, the first question I get from people of, well, what do you do when you're in ministry? What are you doing? How, how do you do it? And it's really simple. Uh, we have uh, usually there's two team members and one individual that has come into the tent, and uh, we simply say that um, uh, we're all sitting down, and and I just simply say, now we're just going to meditate here for for a while and see what the Creator wants to do, and we're going to rely on the Spirit of Truth and to speak into your life. Is that okay with you? And they say, yeah. We just want you to be comfortable. You just, uh, whatever comfortable means to you, that's how you want, we want you to be. We just want you to receive. You don't have to do anything. And then at that time, we just, uh, we're just, uh, the t my teammate and I are asking God, what do we want to give to this individual? And a lot of times we're just waiting, and I'm looking at the individual, uh, and uh, I just get a simple word such as, um, oh, uh, you look, um, or the eyes might be uh, reflective, and I go, you have such beautiful eyes, I, I just sense that I can see into you and that uh, your spirit is, is uplifting and that you have a draw on you, and that that draw will bring other people around you. And, and I believe the people are attracted to you and they come around you and they want to they want to tell you uh, their story or their complaint or whatever it is and a lot of times they say that's me and then I'll say well you know and then I see that they're carrying a lot of burden this one individual that I was speaking to I said I just see you uh, people gathered around you giving giving their uh, giving their crap to you and you're taking it on the creator, was never, the creator never designed you for that task. He created you to listen, but he created you not to take on their stuff. 
because you have enough stuff of your own. Tears start flowing, and you know you've touched something there. And that opens up to where we can say, you know, the Creator loves you so much, and I just see the spirit of truth surrounding you and wants to take you further and deeper into His truth and wants to lead you into a deeper walk with, with the Creator. And we just go like that, and, and we just see remarkable things happening. And since that time, my, my wife and I have learned uh, just in public. We can do that with anybody. We can, uh, when we're sitting at a restaurant, we can, talk, we can ask, okay, God, what do you want for this server that's serving us? And a lot of times he gives us something, something simple, and they just are floored with whatever happens. And it's just loving on other people, showing that God is different from what they have received in this world, that he's an angry God, that he doesn't love them, but we can tell them that he does love them. Uh, we just had a, a great time, a great team. Uh, this one gentleman came in, his name was Justin. Um, and I said, I see that you're a strong with a kind heart and one that people look up to and a protector of the weak. Uh, Justin sat in, the, in a position of receiving, sitting up straight, arms out, palms up, no expression with his eyes, uh, with his eyes closed. Uh, and when we were done, because was, there was no expression at all throughout the entire time, I said, well, what's going on? What's happening inside? He said, well, I feel, feel peace and calm. And, and a sense of direction in my life. Um, there was Matt that came in, and we sat him down and did the same kind of thing. We're going to meditate here a little bit and see what the Spirit of Truth wants to do. And uh, immediately I saw a broken relationship on him. And I said, I, I, said I, I, I just see a broken relationship on you, Matt. And just mentioning that, the tears start flowing. <laughs> And so we ministered in that vein and just um, uh, prayed a, a, a release of the pain and the suffering there that he had, uh, just a time of healing. And uh, when, we've let, when we were done, I asked him, well, what did you think? What's going on inside? He says, I just feel free. I feel free like I've never felt free before. <laughs> you know that God is touching and God is moving in these people. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, remember, these people don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about religion because that's, what they hear about God, Jesus, and religion is just negative stuff that God wants to come and reign on the parade. We're coming to shine a light in their parade and uh, just shine the love of God in there. I had this one young man come in, and his, um, a lot of people have what they call a playa name. The playa is where we meet, is where the uh, Black Rock City is, out in the desert. And uh, he is, his playa name was Live Oak. And uh, I, entrepreneurship came, upon, uh, came into my mind, and I said, you know, I see entrepreneurship in you. And uh, usually when I, I get the words, other things come come with it, and I said, I, and I see finances in your life, and I see people uh, that you're going to be employing people, and that you're going to be a, a leader in, in, a, um, in employment and, and teaching others how to, how to run a business, and tears start welling up in his eyes, and I said, well, what's going on? He says, well, you see that little four-wheeler outside there, that electric four-wheeler? I said, yeah. So well, that's what I, I just produced that, and I'm looking to do another one. And uh, he brought it out here just to uh, test it out in the desert. And so he, he felt like he, he had re received direction. He left feeling loved. He left feeling uh, having peace in his heart and encouragement when he left our tent. Hallelujah. You know, Richard, the first, the first year that Richard went to this, he, he was under the training of a gal, had done it quite a bit, uh, and she, she came and spoke to us, uh, named Cindy Miguel, and she said something at one time, because there's uh, this low-pressure, non-evangelic, evangelistic kind of approach. Uh, it was different for us, you know? And then, uh, so I started thinking about it, and I thought about some scripture that came up and really encouraged me in the whole process, that it's the kindness of God that leads to repentance. And so you got a whole bunch of people who are looking at every other weird conceivable spiritual source when, uh, because they've, they've believed that God and, and he's been presented in such a way 
that he's angry at him and he wants to judge him and stuff. So I was, I was resting in that pretty good. It's the kindness of the Lord. And, um, and then Cindy said something interesting. She said, no man comes to God. No man comes to Jesus unless uh, the Father draws him or woos him. And he said, so why can, can we not be sensitive to the place in their journey where they are in that wooing? And uh, for some people, it's right at the very beginning. And for others, it's right at the end. You know, and we celebrate and we rejoice all the time because Jesus appears to Muslims in their dream and then the evangelization process goes on that way um, or that miracles are happening all over the place. And yet when we, when we share ourselves or with our own neighbors and friends, we feel like we're, we're trying to get a notch on our gun or just try to score immediately at, at, at some, um, do you want to confess Jesus is Lord kind of point. When in fact, uh, I think that's not only a sign of us being a little bit self-centered in our approach. In other words, we want to be validated by the form of evangelism that we do. And the other thing is we just simply don't trust God. We don't trust God to, to, to follow through on that young man's life when he walks out of there. Uh, because this is not, not the last encounter the Lord's going to have. It's not the last word that's going to be spoken. It's not the last thing. And uh, tell one more story about the, uh, the folks from Switzerland and how this, this, this is another thing too, is if you're just persistent in reaching out and loving people, it creates things, opportunities. So go ahead. Uh, on our last year, we, um, it was just a, a small group. There was only five of us, and we were, it was kind of um, uh, going out to see how we, th we left the other camp to start a new camp. And so that last year, we went out to see what our camp would look like. We wanted to get some ideas. So, um, uh, so we just had a small area, but... Um, this uh, gentleman came up and said, hey, uh, we got a small uh, trailer or uh, RV. Can we park in your area? He said, oh, sure. Well, it turned out to be a huge RV. And uh, it was these two Swiss guys. And, uh, and I'm thinking, wow, this is kind of weird. Cause, and now they're starting to come around. And, and you know, we're friendly. We, uh, bacon is a big uh, a draw in, uh, uh, in the morning. And, and uh, they, they ate a lot of meals with us. And they'd go out and party. And then they'd come back. And, but anyway, throughout that week, we uh, developed a, a relationship with them. And uh, one of the guys, uh, it was um, Chris, he met a gal out there. And, and I'm and they're doing their thing, and, they, and she's getting around and coming around, and, and we get introduced to her, and we're making friends with her. Um, well, this year, they came out again, the, th the three of them plus uh, another gal, and um, they just said, you know, we just wanted to be with you guys. They, they were in another camp. We just want to come down because we feel like we're family with you, and, and uh, it's, just been, it's just been a different type of relationship that I've never had before uh, in building. And it was just loving on people. Uh, now, we don't hide our Christianity. We, if someone leaves their Bible out or something like that, um, you know, we, we're, we're not hiding Jesus from anyone. But these people, all they know is that we, um, Chris, his girlfriend said, well, what do they do in their in their team. They, and Chris said, well, they do spiritual reading. And she said, well, if I had known that, I wouldn't even bothered uh, uh, having a relationship with them. But because she didn't know, and uh, we built a relationship with her, uh, she was open to us. Uh, one of the things that happened during the week was that she had this opportunity to sing out on the playa and uh, with this band, and she had this one song that she was going to be singing. And so our entire team went out there to support her. And uh, she was so shocked that we would all come out there to listen to her song. And we waited for an hour and a half before she even came on stage. And she said, you guys waited and you stayed and you, I just, I've never had that happen before. She was just thrilled that we were there. And it just, it just kind of built a bond there that um, uh, has just been awesome. And, so I'm curious of how, where this is going. I'm, I'm just kind of, okay, God, what's the next step? What's the next chapter in this relationship? Because they say, when we, at the end of that week, we all hugged and so forth and just 
you know, we're, you guys are family to us, and we're going to see you again, so don't say goodbye, because we're going to be back next year or whatever. And, That's cool. And uh, it's just been an awesome experience. So anyway, I, I just want you guys to give Richard a hand for going and, and uh, reaching out. Okay, and finding that God is out there working among people who are spiritually hungry, but... These things people give out, and uh, we give out our stuff too. Well, last year we gave out um, a necklace that had uh, the um, uh, alpha, and alpha and omega on it. Well, we were down in the, the big city. There's a center place. It's called Center Camp. In the center camp, they have a whole bunch of different activities going on. And they have a bunch of displays and artwork and so forth. And so we were looking through this stuff and came across this case that has a lot of this stuff in it, this Burning Man uh, stuff. And uh, guess what was in that case? It was in there? <laughs> That's cool. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah, I guess the economy there is everybody gives everything away. You, uh, you don't sell anything or anything. So people that do food or people that do coffee or have gifts and stuff like that. Anyway, it's just been a great learning experience for us. Great thing. Uh, a couple of people have been at the end of that spectrum and given their heart to the Lord there. Uh, others are being impacted and, and having their lives turned around. There was an interesting story from last year. I think it was last year. about this young gal that uh, had suppressed her desire to dance and it was a really big deal an emotional thing to have that released in her again and so anyway it's pretty fun also uh emily where are you at